he can't believe it at first, as you wouldn't really. And he qu questions his friends quite rightly, um, thinking that they're playing some kind of elaborate joke or game with him, really. Um, he doesn't check the date, but it, you know it could easily be an April Fool thing. Um, it's not April, so it doesn't come up. But um, he then goes to Google, obviously, because where do you go <laughs> these days? to Google, to God, <laughs> the equivalent of God, um, to find out is this true? And of course there's nothing on Google. And, uh, and the fact that there's nothing on Google, provided he hasn't mistyped it, and he doubles back on that, means that there's something here that's seriously changed, really. So he goes to his record collection, there's no, there appears to be no evidence anywhere of them at all. So obviously one of the big... Um, challenges for him as it would be for anybody and you can put yourself through this exercise easily is think wow could I remember more than a few lines you know how would you go about um <laughs> how would you go about trying to render uh, all the verses of a particular song really not just the chorus the chorus you can probably depend on but the verses how would you get them back so there's kind of elaborate sequences of him trying to summon up the knowledge of where, the, the, you know, he, he's got phrases, as, as indeed we all would have. You carry phrases, I think, easily, but the sense of it, and often you realise when you, with some of your favourite songs, you often, you misremember the lyrics anyway, because you kind of like, you sort of fill in bits that aren't absolutely clear in the, in the expression of the singer. You, you kind of like suit yourself with them, and, and so you often learn them wrong anyway, but he has to go and, he has to try and find, which he does through a series of post-it notes, he has to try and remember, recall and record as, as he picks them up, as he begins to gather all the bits together again, as many Beatles songs as he can. There's a connection, really, with him and the songs where he's both utterly respectful and yet free with them as well. It's his voice and it's him, it's his version. It's not some... Um, entertaining karaoke version that tries to be clever or it's not some rethink of them it's not some reworking even but they're fresh they fe you feel like you're hearing the song afresh from him and that was from when he first came in and we did a bit of acting first did we or did we sing the song first oh no I think he sang USSR first and as soon as he sang it I knew you have one of those moments in casting I thought I don't know how I'm going to cast him because there were there were other people who were probably more um, obvious candidates for it, but I knew then, I thought that's him. It was a very interesting sort of skeleton, I don't know, like a kind of like an, like an x-ray of the idea, because obviously he's been through that movement in his career where he goes from being a singer-songwriter playing pubs in Suffolk and Norfolk and just locally, and then being catapulted into incredible, unbelievable um, success and fame and all that kind of stuff, and, and with a body of songs that has, that has taken him there. I regard Richard as, uh, he's our, he's Britain's poet laureate of uh, romance and comedy. And I've always been in, you know, I've always been in awe of his devotion to that um, intersection of romance and comedy, really. It's a beautiful thing. 